out my newest toy creation. These are special goggles that change what I see. See these gears here on the side? All I have to do is give it a turn. And the robotics inside these goggles make me see things differently. Isn't that robotastic? Want to have a look? So I'm looking around and I see my room. But then I turn the gears and... Wow! I'm in the jungle! Let's see what happens when I turn the gears again. Whoa! I'm in outer space! Let's give it one more turn. Oh, yes! I'm at the beach! These are amazing! Okay, friends, we're just using our imaginations. But isn't it cool to imagine a pair of goggles that can change the way we see things? Callie, time to clean your room. Oh, man. I don't want to clean my room. I mean, what is the point? It's just going to get messy again. Hey! What if I had a robot helper who would clean up my toys for me? That would be awesome! I'm going to imagine my super cool cleaning robot some more while we check out today's Bible story. It's time for today's Bible story, and it comes from the book of John, chapter 9. One day, Jesus and his friends came upon a man who could not see. He was blind. Jesus' friends thought that the man or someone in his life must have done something wrong for this to happen. Jesus helped them see that this wasn't true. Jesus took dirt from the ground and spit from his mouth and made mud. He took the mud and put it on the man's eyes. It seemed kind of gross, and it probably wouldn't have worked if we did it, but it worked because he was Jesus. When the man washed the mud away, he could see. The day that this happened was called the Sabbath, and it was a day that no one was supposed to work at all. Those were the rules. Those in charge thought that Jesus had broken the law by helping this man on the Sabbath day. They were so focused on keeping the rules that they couldn't see how wonderful it was that this man, who could not see, now could. The people in charge asked the man to tell them what had happened. He told them, but they didn't believe him. They got mad and, and threw him out. Jesus found the man and asked him if he believed in the Son of God. The man said that if he saw him, he would believe. And Jesus told the man that it was him. The man believed and followed Jesus. Even though the people in charge didn't want to change, the man who used to be blind, his family, and everyone who saw what happened saw the truth. When we believe in him, Jesus changes how we see things. Guess what happened, friends? My dad came into my room while I was imagining my cleaning robot. He stepped on one of my toys. He tripped. He stumbled. And he stubbed his toe on the side of my bed. Ouch! It was epic! And not in a good way. I felt so bad. It sure helped me to see things differently. I realized that cleaning my room is important because people can get hurt if I don't. I love my dad, and I don't want to see him stub his toe like that again. Seeing what happened to my dad really changed the way I think about cleaning my room. Kind of like the gears on my imaginary goggles. And definitely like Jesus in our Bible story changed the way that man saw things. Jesus changes how we see things. You know what's cool about cleaning my room? I can listen to music and dance the robot while I do it. You want to join me? Awesome! Let's get robotic!
growing and getting robotic with me today, friends. Remember, Jesus changes how we see things. See you next time. Bye. Over his lifetime, Jesus performed many miracles, ranging from turning water into wine all the way to resurrecting dead people. One of his more well-known miracles was helping a blind man see. Let's dive in by opening our Bibles to John 9. As Jesus went along his way, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus replied that this man was actually blind so that the works of God might be displayed in him. After saying this, he spit on the ground, made some mud with the saliva, and put it on the man's eyes. Yuck! What kind of medicine did they have back then? Anyway, it seemed to work, because after Jesus told the man to wash his eyes in the pool of Siloam, the man could see everything around him. It was so incredible that most people couldn't even believe it. Jesus later asked the person he had healed, Do you believe in the Son of Man? Who is he? The man asked. Tell me so I may believe in him. And Jesus replied, You have now seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. Then the man said, Lord, I believe. Jesus turned this into a teaching moment about spiritual blindness. Jesus said, people who are truly blind will see, and people who think they can see will be blind. This means that the truly blind people, the people who aren't aware of the Holy Spirit, will see the Holy Spirit, and the people who think they know all about the Holy Spirit will realize that they don't know anything about it. Jesus changes how we see things, which is our big idea. Jesus changes how we see things. See you next week, Journey Kids. Hi there, you little chicken nuggets, and welcome to Grill TV. Hosted by Carl, where we have fun with our friends, talk about Jesus, and go over everything the Bible has to offer. Now, once again, welcome to Cool TV. Hey there, kids. How are you? Oh, hey. So you're probably wondering why I got my eyes shut. That's yeah, simply because of one reason. As I am sure you are fully aware, I have decided to live my life as a full robot. My journey from human to robot is about 93%. I am so close. A lot of people keep asking me, hey Carl, why do you want to become a robot? Well, that's easy. They're strong, they got a computer for the brain for the, so they're like really smart. They have no muscles so they never get tired. And they can consume a five pound bucket of nuggets in 10 minutes. Oh, and they also have super duper, uh, super duper vision, like lasers. I actually heard that some robots can stare from millions of light years away. Isn't that incredible? So today I'm going to show you my new invention, my brand new robot glasses. Ah. Ah. What do you think? I love them. Ah, who is that? Carl, it's me, Jada. Oh, hey Jada, how's it going? Good, are those robot glasses? They sure are. Can you see out of those? I sure can't. <laughs> nice. Why are you wearing those? I don't know. I want to be a robot, but it seems like I'm mm, failing. Why do you say that? I don't know. I just want to be a full robot, you know? Like a Terminator type of indestructible. Like Super Duper Vision, but I can't see with the those, those things. I put them in my robot body. Yeah, I'll keep wearing these. Yeah, well, I think you're on the right path, and it's okay if you can't see those glasses. You know why? Because you're gonna pay for me to have a robotic eye surgery? So I shoot lasers out my eyes? 
As I was saying, you don't need super high-tech robot glasses to see clearly because Jesus teaches us how to see things the right way. Uh, do you care to expand on that? Sure. So I was reading in John chapter 9 today, and I read the story of Jesus and the blind man. And this man hasn't been able to see for his whole life. Oh, wow. That can't be easy. This man was known in the city by almost everyone. Every day people would pass him on the street because he would sit there and ask people for money and for help. One day Jesus and his disciples were walking by and the disciples asked a question. They asked Jesus who sinned, this man or his parents that he was born blind. Wait, are they saying that the only reason they think he's blind is because him or his parents messed up somehow? Yep. What? That's messed up. What kind of question is that? Well, back in the day, there were people who believed that the reason why some people had certain issues or struggles was because of their sin or their parents' sin. Wow. What'd you just say? He said, neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus, but this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. Hmm. What happened next? Jesus then spit on the ground, made some mud, then rubbed the mud on the man's eyes. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Continue. Jesus then told the man to wash himself in a pool, and guess what? The man was able to see with eyes for the very first time. No way! Time to mm, celebrate. The thing is, not everyone wanted to celebrate. What? There were these religious leaders called Pharisees that didn't like that Jesus did what he did. Excuse me, how? It's a miracle. A man's life was changed forever. I know, but it drove these people nuts and bolts. And that's kind of where I learned an important lesson in the story. What's that? Well, in this passage, Jesus tells us he is the light of the world. Like a light bulb? Kinda. You see, the world is filled with darkness, and that darkness is sin. Our choices that are bad and against what God has in mind for us. But Jesus is telling us that he is the light. He will be the one who can help us see through the darkness. Oh, wow. I walked around in the dark. It stinks. I almost stubbed my toe in something. It's terrible. So what Jesus was talking about was that even if we are able to use our eyes to see, that's not the most important seeing he wants us to do. Jesus taught us that we need to learn how to see things God's way. And we can only do that through Jesus. The true light. So like the Pharisees, they were able to see that the man was healed, but they couldn't see past their own stubbornness. To see God's love and power, right? You're absolutely right. Jesus changes not only how we see ourselves, but the whole world and everything in it. I love that. Hmm. Side note, I think it's kind of cool that Jesus liked to play in the mud too. Hey there kids, today's big idea is Jesus changes how we see things. So let's say that in our best robot voice on the count of three, okay? Ready? One, two, three. Jesus changes how we see things. Perfect job, everybody. Now make sure to tune in next week because I have a feeling Carl is pretty close to figuring out this whole robot thing. <laughs> see you then. Thank you for watching and tune in next week for a new episode of Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here.